All right. So yet another Saturday evening. This is our masterclass weekend session. We are today on the 29th of July, 5 p.m. as always. And first, I'm going to walk you through the markets, the benchmark indices, followed by the sectors. We'll look at the ratio charts. We'll also today look at the RRG graphs and try and figure out if we get any signs of sectoral rotation happening or not. So Nifty first uh, essentially was a sign of a, a slowdown, a break, a halt. Because if you remember, in the last five weeks, four weeks, the index went up with a decent amount of momentum behind it. And we hit an all-time high. The gift Nifty hit a 20K. Um, I have marked this day because this is where the Reliance demerger happened. I've marked it and just want to see. Uh, whether this turns out to be a serious top or not. And so we can we can say, we can conclude that last week's fall was more like a stoppage, a halt in the underlying strong uptrend and the momentum is still intact in the weekly time frame. If we look from a monthly perspective, which is also not a bad idea because the month of July is almost to an end. Over here also trend-wise, momentum-wise, we are fine. So these two time frames, the larger time frames, are yet to give us any signs that we should be worried about. Yes, the monthly charts is offering us very good looking M2 divergence, which is, which is important, which is crucial. But divergence does not necessarily mean that prices will fall. Divergence means that we should be careful if prices fall. And for that fall, price have to create some kind of a divergence, price has to create some kind of a setup, jo weekly, monthly charts mein nahi hai. So medium term to long term point of view, it's bullish, it's intact, and last week was more like a consolidation. This last week's consolidation in the daily time frame has essentially taken a, a shape like an, a three-wave ABC kind of a correction. Yes, we have prices slipping below the uh, our T1 moving averages, yes, we have our M2 and M1 uh, momentum indicators falling. We call this momentum shift. So on the daily time frame, the momentum has started to shift very clearly. We have a good looking hiken on the daily time frame based on Friday's close. And important, I think, was not the demerger reliance date on the top over here. The important over here, the important day over here going forward will be Thursday's trade, the expiry. Because it had created a big outside bar and it has kind of defined a good level on the downside and a decent level on the upside. Around 19,800, 60, 70, around 19,900 on the top, 19,600 on the bottom. Friday, it did manage a bit of a bounce back towards the last uh, couple of hours, which was okay because it fell one way down. So some kind of a bounce back is obvious. But if, if by Monday or Tuesday we see a break of this low, this weakness is going to further extend. Last time the index consolidated was somewhere here. The upper border comes in this level, the lower border comes in this level, which is around what? 19,500, 19,300, 300, 500. So even if the, stock, even if the index comes down to 300, 500, something like this, then that will be just a healthy corrective move in a very strong weekly chart and a very strong monthly chart. That does not disrupt the long-term bullishness on these on the Nifty chart. But yes, as short-term momentum traders, we will, we will be more than happy to make use of this short-term dip. So view is cautiously bearish from the daily time frame because this is our main trade frame from where we take our trades. But if you ask me a view about not from a trading perspective, but from an investment perspective and from the overall health of the market perspective, it's fairly bullish, right? The 75 minute time frame was overly oversold. Our three of three had also slipped below the, 20, the 10 mark. And yes, some bit of a bounce back is very likely. You see the last time when uh, in the 75 minute time frame, the index had faced, has, had created some kind of a support here. And level wise, it's around uh, 19,660, 670 kind of zone. So, so a serious sign of weakness will be if the index even fails to go above this. 
if Monday it opens flat or down or something like this, that's a sign of a serious weakness because that will mean that the index is not even bouncing back. I sense that it should probably stabilize somewhere here close to that 700 mark before it decides to come down. If it does not go up, if Friday's low is broken, I think we have a good move on the downside happening. Cautiously bearish. If we come to the Nifty and the dollar index ratio chart, the ratio chart has also moved into a short term downtrend with momentum shift, which means that the buy Nifty sell dollar ratio that was playing out is now going to go through a short term corrective mode. So that sinks in with the 150 200 points weakness that we're expecting in Nifty, which will be a natural healthy weakness for the market. In terms of the gold, if we read the Nifty, there's nothing much but slowdown. Definite momentum slowdown happening in M1 on the weekly charts and definitely slowdown is very clear in the daily time frame. The daily time frame probably will give you something like an ascending triangular uh, feel to it. The Heiken Ashes on the weekly is very clearly shrinking in terms of their size, the size of the body, lots of dojis. So structurally very strong, buy nifty sell gold is fine, but probably going forward it can slow down. But in terms of the dollar index, yes, Nifty is slowing down. Broader markets, mid cap and small cap are in no mode to come down. In fact, mid cap was a big outperformer last week also. Huge vertical parabolic move coming in from the mid cap index. From the small cap index also, you will notice a parabolic move and kind of a doji on the weekly time frame. A bit of a weakness in the M1, M2 readings. So maybe if the market comes down, another 100, 200 points from a short term point of view, small caps have are creating that kind of a possibility. Indicators are suggesting that price is no way suggesting that. So we should only act once price suggests. So I think going forward, um, it will continue to be a stock specific market. We have to find the right kind of sectors and within which if I if we find, can find a good stock. Bank Nifty financials are the most important pocket of the market. Um, Bank Nifty, is this a dark cloud cover, a Japanese candlestick uh, pattern? Looks like that, not bad, but we don't want to go there. We want to take a look at the momentum, which has slipped down. We want to take a look at the position of the price, which is below the short term moving average. We definitely want to take a look at the Haiken Ashi, which is what we call as a red hot Haiken. Similar view, uh, just like the Nifty. Um, it can come down a little bit. Remember something, this, previous breakout point of bank nifty the previous highs is where the bank nifty has managed some support on friday's trade so a break of friday's low will definitely 45 to 50 kind of levels will 100 percent definitely trigger for the weakness which is again i would repeat is healthy for the overall structure of the market by the way if we take a look at the monthly chart of the of the bank nifty we could see some decent looking M2 divergences on the monthly, which is kind of not there as, as it was very evident on the monthly chart of Nifty. So banks have led this move, banks have outperformed. Now the PSU banks are performing better than the private sector banks. So I think this is one pocket we cannot ignore, either on the downside or on the upside. We have to have some position in both sides of the swing move. CNX Finance, will give you a similar kind of a picture momentum uh, drop with the short term trend reversal a dark cloud cover kind of a behavior so view over here is also cautiously bearish and we'll see if we can get some shorting opportunities especially within the pace especially within the private sector banking lot okay coming to auto cnx auto um slowing down indeed it was kind of a breakout over here, which kind of slowed down the index. Last week, you can see the size of the upper shadow over here. The size of the Haiken Ashi bodies are shrinking. Exceptionally strong monthly chart, no problem. m and enjoys the maximum weightage over here and m and gap down, I think on Thursday. And so the momentum wise, it has moved into a downtrend. Momentum is weak. Do we have a pullback trigger? Not yet. We have a breakout trigger. But I would suggest wait, wait for the pullback. So over here, from a short term point of view, bearish. Ratio charts of CNX Auto vis-a-vis -vis 500 is also suggesting the same thing. It's suggesting that there is a possibility of a fall. 
So we'll look for shorting opportunities within the auto. Consumer durables, we were uh, kind of bearish in it. And uh, the right reasons for that bearishness was the fact that there was a slant kicking in. The trend reversed. Now it's kind of gone a bit choppy within a pretty decent range. Monthly charts are offering a slant as well as an RSI divergence. That's weekly charts, I'm sorry. Monthly charts are exceptionally strong, no problem. So a short term weakness is possible. Do we have a trigger? Well, we have a counter bar on Friday's trade. Heiken Ashe is holding well, it's an inside bar. So again, the same logic, below Thursday's low or Friday's low, it can open up. But what worries me is it's been kind of range bound and the range is fairly wide. The ratio chart, which gives us some relative strength understanding, consumer durables is weak across all time frames. So shorting opportunities, if we get, we should, we should go with it. Energy is doing much better than the rest of the sectors. Weekly charts are very good looking, have gained fairly good. Monthly charts are one, two, three, four, five on, on route. It's fifth consecutive positive month. Daily charts have also done well. So in these three different time frames, we don't have any immediate sign that we should be careful about. Will this turn out to be a two bar strength RSI divergence, which can slow down or reverse? That we'll get to know only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So as of now, whatever we see, it is bullish. Yes, it might be stretched. It is stretched on the weekly. It is knocking those levels on the monthly. So it doesn't make sense to chase this sector. Any kind of a short term corrective move that it has given us in the past can be used as an opportunity. So bullish, but not at the current price. We should wait. Look at the ratio of CNX energy with the with the CNX 500. And I'm quite sure that we will see a decent amount of relative strength also here from a short term perspective. If you take a look at the CNX 500 with the monthly perspective or weekly, it doesn't give us that confidence. But is it turning around? It looks so. The weekly charts definitely suggest that the relative strength is increasing. So energy going forward can be an important sector, right? FMCG was exceptionally strong and then we had a breakout failure in the Sun Unilever. ITC also decides to correct a little bit and that's why the CNX FMCG has corrected last week like this. We should not forget that this particular sector and especially ITC, that particular stock has been phenomenal in this entire run up of the market. So playing contradiction will not be a good idea. But if you take a look at the daily momentum shift, counter bars, uh, tri star kind of in terms of high Kanashi, maybe if these lows get get breached, this kind of a trend line breakout, if you use trend lines, is what momentum is reflecting towards. If this is more like a consolidation or a sign of a reversal, then you, you might see a bounce back. And the bounce back, I would suggest 50% mark of this long red candle will be somewhere like this. So as long as it stays in this area, it's still cautiously bearish and we might get some opportunities. It's not the best of sector to short because if the market actually falls, you'll find the high beta ones, which is falling, FMCG consumer durables can, you know, find themselves as a defensive bet. So not the best of sector to short, but setup wise, just by going by the charts, I would say yes, makes sense. The ratio charts are also supporting us. If you take a look at the ratio charts to understand the relative uh, weakness, the weakness actually started one, two, three, four, almost I would say three weeks back. Three weeks back, it gave us a signal over here that FMCG has a chance to fall and it has fallen. So FMCG stays in that list of cautiously bearish. IT, uh, disappointing? Yes, indeed. Again, uh, Infosys down 8% created a lot of disappointment for the CNX IT. Every time it tries to find itself back to the levels of 3100 or above the CNX IT index, it reacts. And every time Infosys is right in the forefront in that reaction on the downside. A disappointing move uh, on Friday after the gap down, there was actually not much signs of uh, bouncing back in a hurry. There's more like a drag on the downside. Momentum is weak, trend is weak. I'm betting on the on the on the weekly charts. You would remember that in our last uh, last week's Monday, Wednesday, Friday sessions, I was I was anticipating that the weekly charts will hold and this should this can give a bounce back. But you know, let's let's leave it to the price to decide and let's not predict. So IT, I would 
like not to go long unless i am a long term investor if i find good opportunities from a short side i might take it with a pinch of salt and like a hit and run trade better to avoid better to avoid if i get a good bank to short if i get a good consumer durable or an auto to short then i might go with that rather than going with the it at this juncture this worries me a bit in both the direction now not only just on the short side metals is saving us metals is definitely saving us we had a bullish view for quite some time we have participated in few of the stocks and if you take a look at the daily chart trend momentum weekly chart trend momentum monthly chart trend momentum no problem i would definitely say no problem is it on route it's all time highs dekh ke to aisa hi lagta hai that it's going to go and in friday trade in the morning we did see some weakness in hindalco in sale and most of the metal stocks and by the time it was 3 pm most of them were hitting the days high so the buying from lower levels is still intact and i think that the metals will try its best to extend a little bit more dekhte uh, if we get that or not the cnx metal with the cnx 500 aapko clear signs of relative strength dikhayega it is clearly holding well though it's in a huge range the ratio chart but looking at this kind of a weekly chart does give a lot of faith and hope and possibility that the metals can outperform big time from here on let's see pharma uh, it's a little crazy i was not expecting that the pharma will stretch itself like this especially last week but not only has it taken out its previous fractal highs on the monthly chart but the kind of momentum with with which it has stretched itself i don't know how much um i would say faith we can have in the stability of this move i would suggest that if you have been holding on to pharmaceuticals healthcare stocks in your positional portfolio long only portfolio you can take some profits off the table i generally would suggest to make such exceptional moves to book some profits wait for short term corrective moves to buy back into them so pharma strongly bullish no rational evidence on the charts to go bearish uh stretched uh will not chase at this price and finally real estate reality again the way dlf the way godrej properties and all those stocks are moving is is crazy and the weekly charts exceptional move can we call them call these kind of moves uh, divergences with our m1 or rsi yes with rsi it's very obvious because it's an oscillator but when i see it with m1 it gives me a little bit of of better reading this is the cnx reality index which will definitely give you understanding that the divergence or slant divergence or any kind of divergence does not necessarily mean it will fall divergences are are not signs of reversal they are signs of possible consolidation and can lead to correction so divergence ek signal deta hai price apne ko sauda confirmation deta hai so do not trade divergence take signals from the divergence trade based on the price not on the divergence so coming back to reality exceptionally strong we would wait for it to slow down a little bit and in that case we will not hesitate to go short if i get a good setup strong outperformance with the cnx 500 strongly bearish stays the real estate so real estate pharma metal hum log kuch nahi kar rahe we are long on few metal names uh it we would like to stay away unless we have a very good setup fmcg consumer durables uh, cautiously bearish auto if we get opportunities we will not hesitate to short financials banking we are open to both sides these are the ones that move the market but nifty on overall markets are cautiously bearish friday's low will be extremely important i'm going to quickly take you to the um to the rrg graphs rrg graphs are essentially an indication of um, of uh, relative strength and from a weekly perspective uh 10 week or a 12 week 12 week will essentially give us a 3 month perspective and this is the way that the sectors have play out reality is the biggest gainer followed by auto small cap mid cap so broader markets of the market have done very good you can see at the bottom end this is a 12 months performance um nifty uh private banks dekhi private banks kahan pe hai and they keep psu banks kahan pe psu banks are almost up 10% private banks are around 8 and a half 
from a three month point of view. If I reduce the tail size to let's go to let's say five weeks, then you would see that PSU banks are up almost 15 and a half percent and private banks are four and a half percent. So almost four times gains more in the PSU bank. I'll not spend too much time over here in the RRG graphs, but I would like to bring your attention to the um, to those who are I'm going to sort in terms of their tail. So we have four quadrants here leading to weakening to lagging to improving. They generally move in a clockwise manner. Uh, if you've been following my work for a few years, then you know I used to look at them. Uh, now I'm using both ratio charts and RRG. Clearly real estate, exceptional strong relative strength, relative momentum is weakening. RRG Grass is telling us that relative strength ka jo momentum hai, wo weakening hai. Price weakening nahi. Strength ka, relative strength ka momentum is weakening. Which gives us an indication, early indication ki agar aage ja ke CNX reality ya fir DLF jaise stocks mein agar koi top out hota hai signi, that can be possible. Too early to say that. Auto is, is, is difficult. It was in weakening. It was like this and now it's gone up. It did not go to lagging or improving like this. So it's trying to bounce back. But again, see, it's vertically falling. Vertically falling means momentum of relative strength is weakening. Again, it aligns with our view. Small cap, no problem. On the right, going up like this. No dearth of relative strength or its momentum. Mid cap, sorry. Mid cap also no problem at all. So we continue to have a very bullish healthcare. Look at the way, beautiful way it's going up. No problem. Consumer durables is losing vertical distance in the leading quadrant. It's a strong sector, but it's kind of losing that momentum. Since sinks in fine with our view. Pharma, you know, from improving to lagging and now going back to leading and pointing out upwards, sinks in with our view. No problem. Media is something we do not track so closely. Oil and gas is in the improving quadrant and improving. So one can keep a bullish view. Metals definitely a bullish view, which sinks in with us. Energy was losing a bit of momentum, now picking up. So it sinks with the bullish view that we have in energy pack. PSU banks, look how beautifully from weakening to lagging and now it's going to improving. So positive pocket. FMCG is weakening. We just discussed this. Hindustan Unilever can be a key with ITC. But from leading, it has now come down to weakening. It can weaken further. IT is picking up some relative strength momentum in the lagging quadrant. Not a good position. But can it lead to a bottom out sometime soon? Price. We have to wait for the price to suggest. Bank Nifty, not so good. CNX Finance, not so good. Falling both in terms of the horizontal readings as well as the vertical readings. These are not good signs. And then the private sector banks. So you know which are the pockets to look for. If you ask me the banking and the financials where you can look to short. RRG is something that or the concept of relative strength is something that I've been fascinated with since 2009. I used to use RRG graphs on my Bloomberg terminal earlier. Later on, stock charts also introduced it. This is something that is not part of our curriculum. I have personally not added it because it requires a, an, a, an another software and all that thing. So leave it to me. I will go through them. I'll explain this concept to you. But if you want to understand them um, by the theory, you can definitely go to the internet. Just type ratio charts and there's a, sorry, just type RRG graphs and you'll find a lot of, lot of reading material which will talk about how you can use it. But before I end this analysis, I would suggest wo ratio chart or uh, RRG graphs or any fancy multicolored stuff. Ho, they are all prospective signals. The final call decision to buy or sell or whatever has to 100% always has to come from price. Do not buy or sell based on RRG ratio charts or any indicator. Buy and sell when the price moves in your anticipation. Okay, I've taken a little bit of extra time today with my analysis of the sectors. Now we go and update our stop losses of the weekly portfolio. Look for long opportunities for the next week and of course your doubts and questions.